You might think that 100%ing every Mario Kart in one week would be a breeze, right? Well, in reality, it was incredibly mind-numbing, frustrating, and even caused me physical injuries. But how is that even possible? I mean, it's just Mario Kart. You just have to get first place in the Grand Prix, right? <laughs> So the answer isn't quite that simple, because oftentimes getting 100% takes an extremely long period of time. After making way more food compared to last time, I was ready to go. This is my journey. So here's my new timer, it's actually going to count down this time, and boom, I officially have less than 7 days to finish every Mario Kart game. Let's do this! Doki! Ho oh ho! Peachy! Starting with our first day is Super Mario Kart. In order to 100% this one, I simply need to get a gold medal in all the cups, 50, 100, and 150cc. In other words, I have to play well for 60 races. This is easier said than done because Super Mario Kart goes out of its way to make your life miserable. In fact, I've never fully beaten this game because of its difficulty and how unforgiving it can be. I'm playing each of these games on official releases and have decided to play the first three Mario Karts on Switch Online for convenience. And yes, I used the SNES controller the whole time so it feels as authentic as possible. Now on to the game itself. It's by far one of the worst age games on the SNES. Maybe that's a hot take, but no matter how many times I pick this game up, I can never get used to the controls. Moving feels so slippery, and the track selection is so boring. There's like three Bowser castles, four Mario circuits, two Koopa beaches. I really don't have an affinity with Super Mario Kart, but that doesn't matter because I was on a mission. The goal today was to 100% Super Mario Kart, Mario Kart 64, and get a start on Super Circuit. I was feeling pretty good and really tried to have a positive headspace. When I marathoned the 3D Mario games, I got negative really quickly and it made the week not very fun. But this time, I was feeling great. I'm expecting to struggle at the end of this game, but more than determined to complete Super Mario Kart as fast as I was able to. But within like 30 minutes, things were already starting to heat up. The main issue that makes this game so infuriating to play are the computers, and that's because these bastards cheat. And I'm not even exaggerating, they have an infinite amount of items and they rubber band. If you're not sure what rubber banding is, well basically it's the game's method to creating difficulty. If you're too far ahead in the race, the game doesn't like that, and the racers will quickly speed up and get right behind you or even pass you. And as for the item problem, oh my god. Mario and Luigi use stars, Peach and Toad use a poison mushroom, Yoshi an egg, Bowser and DK a fireball, and Koopa a green shell. The CPUs can use these particular items whenever they feel like it. They don't have to hit the item space to get the items, they they just have them. In what world is that supposed to be fair at all? And the CPUs can also pass through obstacles, like Bowser just phases through this thwomp like it's nothing. For someone that doesn't actively play Super Mario Kart, it is incredibly unfair. And I get this is an old game and BS Challenge was just the norm back then, but playing in the current time period is such a pain. But anyway, we quickly made our way to the point that I've never passed. 100cc Special Cup. Yep, I've never even tried 150cc because I couldn't unlock it. That's how brutal Super Mario Kart is. But my spirits were high, and while I was struggling, I actually managed to pull through for the first time in my life. Here we go. Game plan, watch this shit. Boom! Okay, second place! Yes! Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> You know this game is hard when I'm popping off at 100cc. As soon as I started 150cc, I ran into problems. Literally the first stage I was ranking out because the other racers were just faster. Why were they faster? I don't know, because cheating makes them feel good? And I don't think I was making any mistakes, they just kept passing me for no reason. <laughs> what? What? He just jumped over my red shell? Like I said, this game cheats and all you can do is outbeat the cheater. And the SNES controller that I was just praising is now starting to hurt my thumbs. It's not exactly the worst thing ever, but it made playing a bit more unpleasant. I guess maybe the issue was that I was pushing too hard on the button because of how intense the game is? I'm not really sure. I was kind of surprised to be experiencing pain at all. But that was the least of my worries. 150cc was kicking my ass, and I had to retry tracks several times because the CPUs were ramming me into corners, I got hit by one item, basically anything that qualifies as a mistake 
lake makes it impossible to secure first or second. Koopa Beach 2 was by far the worst. There are so many water pits you can fall into, and doing so means you lose automatically. Now, maybe I just don't know how to play this, and that's probably true to some extent, but I was seriously raging. I get mad at games sometimes, but this particular stage made me so mad that I was uncomfortable watching what I sounded like back over, so I'll just say that it took me a solid hour to finally clear this. So much for being in a good headspace, but I know I'll feel a lot better once I get to Double Dash. Despite the seething anger and sheer desperation to escape Super Mario Kart, I was making progress and eventually I cleared the final cup in 150cc. Thank freaking god. Next up was Mario Kart 64, and yes, I busted out the N64 controller for this one so it feels like the original. To 100% this one, it's the exact same process, but with one extra thing, extra mode. I basically need to complete 64 races. Now, I grew up with this Mario Kart, and I'll always have a soft spot for it, but I also know that it can be unfair as well. The item spawns aren't as much of an issue, but the rubber banding is so bad at the harder levels. But starting up, of course, was 50cc, and this had to have been the first time I played this game at 50cc since I was like 8 years old. And my goodness, did it feel so, so slow. And that's when I came to the realization that 50 and 100cc were gonna feel like a slog for the rest of these Mario Karts because I'm so used to the faster speeds. But honestly, after the torture that was Super Mario Kart, it was kind of nice to have a breather and get used to Mario Kart 64's controls again. I did not have this luxury when marathoning the 3D Mario games. It was action-packed the whole time with very little breaks, so this will be a very different experience overall. Now, this game has aged okay. The tracks are great, and I love the character's voice is the death, but that's about the only highlights. The red shells still don't work that well, but at least the CPUs aren't jumping over them, thank god, so this still feels like it's gonna be slightly easier. In terms of how to fend off the rubber banding, well, it kind of just comes down to your item luck. I mean, seriously, the CPUs will pass you and zoom ahead if you don't consistently get shells of bananas to hit them. In some aspects, this is kind of fun because you have to put in the effort to use your items properly, but it's not fun when you get a mushroom or something completely useless and the CPUs zoom ahead and there's nothing you can do about it. But in general, I didn't have that many problems getting golds this time, except for one course, Toad's Turnpike in extra mode. Because the cars and trucks drive towards you and good freaking luck of them. If you get hit by one, you'll get hit by multiple in a row because you have no invincibility frames. But who cares? I managed 100% Mario Kart 64 and it's 1 in the morning, oh boy. I did start later in the day, but I was kind of hoping to make more progress in Super Circuit. So I basically just did one cup of that and then went to bed. So overall, a fairly frustrating day, but I know that after I get through Super Circuit, it's gonna be smooth sailing. <laughs> So, Mario Kart Super Circuit. The process to getting 100% just might be the most difficult and obnoxious task of any Mario Kart to ever exist. For every cup, we need to secure a 3-star rank, a common thing in the modern era, but this was the first title to include them. We also have to get 100 coins or more for each cup to unlock the extra cups, and those extra cups just so happen to be the Super Mario Kart tracks, which means I need to complete 180 races. You can tell how excited I am about this ordeal, can't you? I'm just stoked. At first, I thought getting 3 stars would be a piece of cake. I also wanted to get 100 coins on my first run so that I would unlock the extra cup faster, so I was just playing along, and on the first cup, I played basically flawless. I got a ton of coins and did everything right, yet I got 2 stars. Huh, that's strange. I didn't make any mistakes, so I'm not sure why that happened. So I moved on to the next cup, and I got 3 stars this time. Uh, what did I do differently? I have no idea, and that's the problem. I'm gonna explain how the star system works in a bit, but while I was playing this, it seemed completely random if I would get one to three stars per cup. So this in turn made it feel like I needed to play perfectly no matter what, and that became more and more of a problem with the faster speeds and harder tracks. I kept resetting over and over again if I would make one tiny error, and after a while, it was starting to drive me crazy. Not because I felt like I was playing bad, but because I had to play like a task bot. And even when I was playing what I believed to be 
perfect, I still wasn't getting three stars. I finished 50 CC, I got 100 coins in every cup, and then I didn't unlock the extra cup. That's strange. Maybe I'm supposed to also do this for 100 and 150 CC as well? So that's exactly what I did. I struggled through all those tracks again, barely squeezing out one or two star ranks, and I still didn't unlock the extra tracks. And that's when I found out that you are forced to play the cups twice. On the second playthrough, you can unlock the extra cup, and only for that CC. So that means I had to play 50, 100, and 150 CC two <gasps> times over just to unlock the extra tracks. Which, by the way, I still had to play all of those as well. And that wouldn't normally be a problem, except that I'm on a time limit, and I'm trying to get three stars, so I'm constantly restarting tracks over and over again. But now, let's talk about the star ranking system. This is one of the most cryptic, obnoxious, and downright evil systems I've ever seen put into play for a racing game. So the way the star ranks works is based on how many skill points you have by the end of the cup. What allows you to increase or decrease these points? That's where things get interesting, because there are a ton of variables put into play. For starters, the character you pick will award you different amounts of skill points. Bowser gives you 45, DK and Wario 40, Mario and Luigi 30, Peach and Toad 10, and Yoshi 0. This is based on how easy they are to control, so there's some risk and reward factor here. It also depends on what CC you're playing at, so the higher the difficulty, the less skill points you'll get. But that's just the absolute basics of this system. What happens in the race itself can drastically affect your rank. So what can you do to gain more skill points? You can collect coins, run through item boxes while your slots are full, get hit by lightning, and go fast as sh**. These four variables are the only things you can use to get more skill points, and most of them are completely arbitrary. Like, why does it matter if I'm holding onto items or not? And it's more cryptic than that, because not all items that are held count as being held. Triple green and triple red shells do not count as a held item, because you're technically not holding the item button, so it's actually really bad when you get those two items. And then there's the factor of getting hit by lightning. You know how rare of an occurrence that is in Super Circuit? That's so unfair, because you actually get a ton of skill points from something that happens at complete random. But what kinds of things takes away your skill points? Well, I hope you're ready, because I have a long list of crap, so here we go! You can lose skill points by being off-road, not accelerating, braking, using triple red shells, using lightning, using stars, hitting enemies or items on the road, spinning out, bumping into a wall, using a rocket star, and like a two rescuing you from falling. I kid you not, all of these variables can make you lose skill points. I mean, sh no wonder it's so hard to get three stars. Let's just go over some of these. Like, not accelerating, using my brakes? Are you kidding me? Why the hell should that matter at all? This is a racing game. Every race is different, so naturally, I'm going to be forced to play every race slightly differently. And then there's the matter of the items. Using lightning, stars, or red shells as a detriment is complete crap because you have no control what items you receive. I mean, hell, I've gotten stars in second place tons of times in Super Circuit. So what am I supposed to do about that? And then there's hitting enemies or items on the road, spinning out, and like a two rescuing us. I think those factors are fine, although bumping into walls is so petty if you ask me. Then there's using a rocket start. That is so contradicting considering the game wants you to finish laps fast. How am I supposed to do that when I'm discouraged to use the rocket start? And what's crazy is I have never seen anyone talk about how BS this system is, so I'm glad to be sharing it with everyone now because god damn. So I basically figured out this whole star rank system about an hour or so into playing, and that's why I was so focused on playing like a pretty little princess. And guess what? This list of variables misses out on one key factor that also makes a big difference, and that is drifting. Because yes, you can drift in this game, but it's incredibly awkward to do and takes a ton of practice to get used to. It's similar to the other games where you have to jump and turn and then hold that pose for a bit to get a speed boost, so while I could technically drift, I did not have the skills to properly integrate it with my gameplay. It's hard to master because everything feels so slippery, so the drift was either way too sharp or too narrow, which both of these things cost me skill points. And the computers did not help matters either. While they technically don't rubber band, they are extremely aggressive and are still very difficult to deal with. I played this game for most of the day, and eventually I unlocked the extra tracks and I managed to get first place in every cup that I did, but did I get three stars? Nope, I gave up on that journey long ago. But you might be wondering, what exactly do you get with three stars?
Oh, you didn't notice the difference? Wow, I'm shocked. You get a dark blue background instead of a light blue background. That is the reward. Yep, screw that crap. I completed everything else in this game aside from the completely outrageous star ranking system, so I hope you can understand. In fact, I've already 100% this game in the past. When I was in college, I read a forum on game facts that said you could unlock Waluigi if you got three star ranks and everything, so I spent several days practicing and getting really good and actually managed to get the stupid three star rank on everything. You can see it right here on my actual cart. But alas, I did not unlock Waluigi and was a little sad after after all that effort. But that's okay, because it's all uphill from here. Next up was Mario Kart Double Dash, and there's only one way to play this one officially, and that's on an actual GameCube. So I apologize for the quality drop, but there's no other option. In order to 100% this one, I have to get gold in all cups, including the All Cup Tour in Mirror Mode. I just have to complete 96 races. It was also starting to get late already. I started Double Dash at like 8 p.m. after playing Super Circuit for most of the day, but that's okay. This is a good video game. The drifting is actually usable, the tracks are fun, the music is great, it still looks nice. I'm out of Mario Kart hell, finally I can have some fun again. My neck was starting to strain a bit from looking up at my TV that's too high, but I was feeling great, so I didn't care. One of the most nostalgic parts of Double Dash is, strangely enough, the unlock screens. It left a huge impression on me because of how exciting the moment is. You get this super chirpy music, a big and bright notification, and then you get to see exactly what you unlocked. It's much more impactful than most of the other Mario Kart titles, and it further drives you to keep playing the cups. And this game has by far the best final unlockable out of all the Mario Karts. When you finish a Grand Prix, it's celebrated with you driving around in this fancy golden parade car, and that's what you unlock at the very end. It's an awesome reward. The whole game is so rewarding, and thankfully, I didn't make any mistakes and got gold medals on everything on the first attempt. But even so, it was really getting late now, and I was getting exhausted, but I still wasn't done. I needed to make at least a tiny bit of headway into Mario Kart DS. To get 100%, as usual, I'll need to get gold medals in every cup, which includes includes 128 races, but I also have to get a 1-star ranking in every mission mode level so that I can unlock level 7, and then I have to beat all those levels, which gives us 63 total missions. So this game is a bit more involved and has more going on, but I'm pumped. Even though I was dead tired, I was so excited for the next day because this is by far my favorite Mario Kart, and probably always will be. Today was going to be awesome. I get to fully replay Mario Kart DS, and the only culprit was that my thumb was starting to get sore. Which is bizarre, because I'm used to playing games for long periods of time, but I think the reason for that was because I was so intently mashing the buttons the first two days, and that was starting to catch up to me physically. So I have the next strain, and my thumbs hurt. What else could possibly happen? Well, not much today. I basically just cruised through the campaign in mission mode with no problem. The only thing I struggled with was the Ice Bully mission, because he likes to jump over you if you use your mushroom to hit him from too far away. So once I got past him, I was basically done. It still took most of the day because instead of 16 tracks per CC, it was 32, so I was doing a lot more races. But that's okay, because I didn't make any mistakes and didn't have to redo any of the Grand Prix. So as much as I'd like to gush about Mario Kart DS, it was truly a breeze in this marathon. And I still had a decent amount of time to tackle Mario Kart Wii. This one had a bit more intricacy with its unlockables too. I need to get a 1 star ranking on every single cup, which includes 128 races, and also unlock all 32 expert staff ghost data records in time trials. Before doing any Grand Prix, I actually completed 4 time trial races because that unlocks Funky Kong. And with Funky Kong, I can Donkey Kong the computers and make my way through the game with no pain. The Flame Runner and Funky are an infamous pair. They made Mario Kart Wii a lot of fun to play through. Although strangely, I didn't actually unlock Funky Kong until after completing one of the Grand Prix Cups, and I later figured out that I would have to back out of my save and then go back in to actually get my unlockables, and that's very bizarre, but that wasn't the only bizarre thing. After fully completing 50cc, it was only then that I had the option to use bikes and carts. Why on earth was I forced to use the carts then? Because Nintendo really wanted me to use both options? That's a bit of a strange choice, but it didn't matter. I was having fun again, so that's all I could really ask for. Despite feeling very fatigued from playing Mario Kart in general, at the very least I wasn't raging, so I'm fine with that. I ended up completing the time trial Ghost, and did a little bit of 100cc, so I actually made quite a bit of progress. But it was getting late, and I needed sleep. <laughs> 
Going into day four, I was once again excited about being able to finish Mario Kart Wii. Because after this, there are only two more games. But these last two games, well, we'll, we'll get to those when we get there. But for now, I was continuing to just kind of cruise along. I was starting to struggle a bit more, but the star rank system is much more forgiving. I can get second or third place and still squeeze out a one star rank. And lucky for me, I had a save file of Super Mario Galaxy on the Wii U, so that let me unlock Rosalina way faster and didn't force me to get one star ranks in mirror mode. I did have to redo a couple of cups, but overall things went pretty smoothly. The main hurdle for Mario Kart Wii is just how much random crap happens. It feels like a million items can be thrown at you at any time, but then it's usually easy to catch up, so it's not that big of a deal. I was also still having some neck and hand cramps, but I was feeling determined. All I had to do was keep chugging along because I was at a decent pace. Once I did finally finish all the cups, I checked the character select screen and found that I still didn't have me outfit B, which is really strange because I beat every ghost in time trial. So I looked into it more, and you're not gonna believe this, but you have to beat the ghost while also reaching in unlock time. All this really means is that for a couple of tracks, I didn't finish fast enough. In hindsight, this is incredibly confusing and makes no sense considering we're told we just had to beat the ghost, but basically, I just had to improve my times in N64 Sherbet Land as well as GBA Shy Guy Beach. After doing that, I finally unlocked that me costume and was able to move on. This was actually my first time 100%ing this game, so it felt great to finally do that. But this is just the start of our day, because next up is Mario Kart 8. Yeah, I'm saving Mario Kart 7 for last, and I'll tell you why later, but yes, we're busting out Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now, I can see the four of you in the comments putting on your best nerd emoji face right now saying, um, aren't you supposed to beat Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U and the Deluxe one on the Switch? Uh, no, I'm not doing that. These are literally the same games, but the Deluxe version has more stuff in it, which makes it actually harder. And when it comes to getting 100%, the requirements change a lot compared to what we're used to. I actually don't need to play all the cups and their difficulties. No, I just have to get a one-star rank or better in the base game Mirror Cups, and then gold in 200 CC, which equates to 96 races. Then, I have to beat 48 base game staff ghosts and 150cc time trials, and the final requirement will be to collect 5,000 coins. The coins are where you unlock almost everything, because now we have tons of cart parts to get. I decided to start with 150cc mirror mode so I could start getting some coins for better cart parts, which in turn make the time trials easier. Then after that was 200cc, and I don't really like playing the game at this speed because a majority of the tracks just aren't aren't built for how fast you go. I do love the thrill of it, and some tracks work well, but most of them don't, and it's a bit of a pain. But I was raking in tons of coins, which is great. I've been trying to get as many as possible before I start farming for coins, because yes, I'm literally gonna be coin farming in Mario Kart. But yeah, I pretty easily finished 200cc, I unlocked gold Mario, and it was so cool. Oh my god, there he is. Wow, he's gold. And then I got started on time trials. And at this point, I'm actually really bored. And it's not even that the game, okay, I'm not gonna lie, this game is starting to get boring, I want Mario Kart 9 already. But really, it's come down to the fact that I've been playing Mario Kart for four days straight, averaging 14 to 15 hours a day, so it's really getting to me. And there's just so many tracks in this game. I didn't even finish the time trials because there's just too many to do. I got over halfway through and then hit the hay for the night. I started day 5 a little bit late, but I quickly finished the time trials and had one more mission, reach 5,000 coins. And in order to do that, I had a pretty killer strategy. Normally when you're racing, you can only get 10 coins at a time, which is incredibly slow for how many coins I need. So instead, we're going to be using battle mode, because coins here also count towards my overall total. The plan was to use Renegade Roundup, turn off all CPUs but have player 2 on, set the round count to 24, and always pick Dragon Palace. With this method, I'm able to collect 10 coins very quickly and then end the game basically right afterwards. There's two different spawn points, and it also didn't matter if I got eaten or not, I still got the coins in the end. With both of these spawn points, I was able to finish a match anywhere from 18 to 20 seconds, and the only time I had to wait for anything was during the loading, so I was getting roughly 10 coins a minute. 
This is much, much faster than just doing races. Considering each race takes around two minutes, and there's a high chance of getting hit by items and not coming out with 10 coins. And there's a reason I selected 24 rounds, and that's because, well, it's the most you can pick, but at the end, I'm forced to sit through the trophy screen and then make the whole setup again. While this process was fast, it was also incredibly dull. And not only was it dull, but there was no downtime. I had to actively be mashing the A button and trying to get coins as fast as possible. And this method took all day. My entire afternoon was tied up into doing just this, which drove me a little crazy after a while, but I'm so glad I did it. I was really tempted to play DLC stages to get coins because they would have been way more fun, but I'm so glad I did it because Mario Kart 8 is the least of my worries. After a ton of time, I got the 5,000 coins and unlocked every single kart part in the game. So all that was left was the final game, Mario Kart 7. This absolute monster of a game is asking a task so absurd that I can't believe Nintendo actually went through with it. So, to get 100%, we need to beat all the cups, which is 128 races, but we also need to complete 100 races with gyro controls and use that gyro for 80% of it. It's a bit of an odd unlockable. The thing you unlock is just a golden steering wheel that goes away if you don't continue using gyro, but I'm gonna get it anyway just for the sake of it. But are you ready to hear what the final 100% achievement is? We need to collect 20,000 coins. Has Nintendo completely lost their mind? Like, how on earth am I supposed to get that many coins in less than two days? Now, you might be thinking that there's some sort of coin farming strategy I can use, right? Well, I tried just about everything that you possibly could, and nothing worked. The first thing I tried was battle mode, because there's coin runners. I got 10 coins there, finished the battle, and it doesn't add to my coin counter. So then I thought that maybe I could use the local multiplayer. I tested it out with my super old 3DS capture card and discovered something incredible. I completed a race with 10 coins, left the match, and it actually added coins to my counter. So I grabbed all the 3DSs in my house and had a crazy idea. I got all of them turned on, connected every single one of them to my main 3DS's lobby, and I split us all into teams. On my team, I got 10 coins as myself and 10 coins with everybody else also on my team. So I tried finishing the match, hoping that I'd get more than 10 coins because we're on a team, right? And then my counter didn't add up. It, 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 it didn't work. It just didn't work. The last thing I tried was time trials and yet again, the coins there didn't count. So what option does that leave us with? Well, we'll get to that at the end, but for now, I have gyro races to do. I've messed with this feature before, and it's kind of neat, but it has a lot of inherent flaws. For one, it's super awkward to drift with, and two, I can't see anything around me. It was really easy to get hit by items that were passing me because I wasn't able to see them coming. Drifting is awkward because you don't feel or see the impact of the drift. Your cart just kind of starts turning sharper, and that's all the feedback you get out of it. I played through a large chunk of the campaign and almost finished the entire thing. I only had four cups to go and was gonna have to finish them tomorrow since it was extremely late. And then after that, the farming begins. Yeah. Only two days left of this marathon, and honestly, I was still feeling pretty good. But I had a sinking feeling that this challenge was going to be completely impossible. Today is the day that I can ultimately find out as I finish getting my gold steering wheel. Wow, that was truly worth it. Look at that. And then I finished up the rest of the cups and I began the coin farm. Now, what exactly is the most optimal way to get coins? Well, I don't have a scientifically 100% perfect route, but I believe I found the fastest and most consistent method. I played the shell cup, got 10 coins in a race, and then hid somewhere until the computers finish. I did that for all four races and just repeated over and over and over again. Now, I can imagine that you're thinking that this is an incredibly mind-numbing task and there must be a faster way. And I, I do agree this was super mind-numbing, but no, I'm pretty sure this is actually the way to go. And the reason for that is because with this method, I'm always guaranteed 10 coins per race. If I try to do these races normally, the odds of me finishing a race with less than 10 coins is extremely high because of how often you get knocked around with items. And also, the computers are generally very close behind me, so it doesn't really waste that much time waiting for all seven of them to finish three laps compared to me finishing in first place. So that is exactly what I did. And I'm pretty sure the shell cup could be completed the fastest as it generally took around 13 to 14 minutes per cup. That means I was getting around 160 coins an hour. Yeah, 
that's a pretty far shot compared to Mario Kart 8's 600 coins an hour. Not only was this process slower, but I needed four times the amount of coins. But I had a lot of time to just farm coins, and that's why I saved this for last. I knew this was going to take an absurd amount of time, and wanted to finish the other games before getting to this one. So once I would get my 10 coins per race, I basically had nothing to do for about 1-2 to two minutes. So, what exactly did I do? Well, not much. I, I uh, let's see, I, I made this thumbnail for the video. Uh, I bought a bunch of games on eBay. Here they are if you're curious. It's just a bunch of Game Boy Color and 3DS titles I've been wanting. Uh, what else did I do? Um, went on Twitter, uh, watched some some YouTube videos. Yep, that's, that's, that's about it. I was getting incredibly bored, but there's just, there's nothing I can do here. I was getting coins as fast as possible, and that process kept giving me these tiny gaps of time to do things. And also, red alert, red alert, I have officially run out of food. But later this day, I actually fired up Mario Kart Super Circuit again. And that's because I technically didn't get the three-star rankings. So I thought that, hey, maybe I can try to do that while also playing this game. I played Super Circuit for about an hour, and I didn't get a single three-star rank in any of the cups I tried. And honestly, it was because I was getting distracted by Mario Kart 7. I had to keep pausing Super Circuit so I could mash A on the 3DS and keep getting coins. So it was an attempt, but I wasn't able to get really immersed into Super Circuit and just gave up on that. But now that an entire day of this painstakingly long coin farming has ended, how many coins did I end up getting? Well, okay, I technically didn't farm them for the whole day, but I was curious, and guess what my total was? 2,712. After all of that, we're about 10% of the way there. Well, today is sure going to be one of the days of all time. I am so excited. The only thing that I have to do is farm coins and nothing else. So what on earth am I supposed to do to keep myself entertained? I'm kind of going insane staring at the same four tracks over and over again with no relief from it. So you know what I did? I said screw it and fired up Danganronpa. I started this game like a month ago, and I'm at chapter 3 now. And honestly, a game like this is kind of perfect for the marathon. It looks like a visual novel, and it kind of is, but really, it's a murder mystery similar to the Ace Attorney games that tells one of the most gripping stories I've ever heard from a game, period. You're a bunch of high school students, and you're going to the school Hope's Peak Academy, and then boom, everyone passes out, and the next thing you know, there's this talking bear, Monokuma, and he tells all the students that basically to escape the school, you gotta murder each other and get away with it. So this group of students is kind of like teaming up, but they're also scared of each other. Then a bunch of murders happen and everyone goes on trial and holy f the music slaps in this part, and from there you play mini games while solving the case and figuring out who is the killer, and then Monokuma punishes the killer in the most absurd ways possible, and it, uh, it, oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, back to Mario Kart 7. We got 4,500 coins after several hours, which is nice, cool, but the last non-gold cart piece is at 5,000, and... Wow, we got 5,000! And that gives us the Beast Glider. And speaking of beasts, Bayakuya slays at solving mysteries, but he's a snarky asshole. I mean, all the characters are filled with life and personality, despite that you only ever see them in 2D. And I love how the game makes that so obvious when you're running around the school and see the characters in 2D while in the 3D space. But my god, I finished Danganronpa, and I cannot believe that it made me question my morality of hope and despair. Just like this challenge I'm doing. Do you fight for hope or fight for despair? Monokuma makes some sound arguments to despite also being a complete psychopath, like Danganronpa made me upset watching a literal laptop get destroyed. How do you even achieve something like that? That's incredible. I just can't believe how great the game is, and I'm so excited to play the second and third one, but I... Oh. <laughs> My bad, guys, sorry. Look, while I was grinding for coins in Mario Kart 7, this is literally all I was doing, was just playing that game. But moving on, the time is up, the whole week is over, and the truth is about to be revealed. How many coins did we actually get after dozens of hours of grinding? 5,984 coins. That's it. 5,984. So the challenge was impossible. And also, by the way, two hours before this marathon was over, I sprained my ankle by running down the stairs after getting some food, so I wasn't able to walk for a few days. So it's safe to say that this marathon put me in more physical pain than I could have imagined. 
but how long did each game take individually? Super Mario Kart was 4 hours 54 minutes, Mario Kart 64 4 hours 30 minutes, Super Circuit 9 hours 20 minutes, Double Dash 4 hours 46 minutes, DS 7 hours 36 minutes, Wii 10 hours 36 minutes, 7 37 hours 28 minutes, and 8 Deluxe 13 hours 37 minutes. So as you can see, we did a lot of gaming. And I'm not done with these marathons yet, because next time, I'll be doing this with a certain blue blur. I'll let you decipher who that might be. Sonic. Alright, it'll come out shortly after Sonic Superstars, okay?